Hey and a very good morning guys. Welcome back. Time for market moves uh, on MT4. Today uh, the 13th of uh, July, Wednesday, and uh, well, today it's going to be a news driven day. Consumer price index telling us uh, about potentially uh, inflationary momentum and we're going to uh, we're going to talk about also about the uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision, which might also shape markets and obviously uh, cause further momentum. So welcome back everyone and uh, thanks for uh, tuning in here as well at PD Swiss. And obviously you kind of uh, let's uh, check out what uh, markets might give us, what might work and what we uh, have here in order to kind of find potentially further motivation. Let me check, I think the microphone is not uh, connected here let me check if there is any uh, kind of loose connection here in my usb my usb of power let me check i'll uh, remove that one first i think the other microphone offers a better uh, sound connection here it should reload ah okay yeah use yes now you might uh, hear me a bit better guys so uh, uh, connected to the other microphone so i'm sorry about that just noticed after rebooting that uh, it was not properly corrected, uh, connected here. Puria, yeah, well, so what do we have today? Uh, interest rate decision in the morning did not give us uh, anything major on this uh, Wednesday. Well, we can look at the market momentum itself and uh, we'll observe that there's nothing major which is uh, or has been shaping up this market. Instead, we can see after reaching parity in the euro dollar currency pair, the US dollar has been slightly retracing, say, a slight weaker note here. That could be also the expectation. However, as stated beforehand also, I wouldn't like to trade it as such, as I don't know on how much weakness the US dollar is going to offer us on how much weakness we will going we are going to see here, as I believe that in general some sort of a weaker US dollar might be just a bit short-lived and uh, might only give us some sort of a short-term retracement motivation. So what I would do is potentially rather uh, selling these or selling any sort of uh, rallies here again, should the market retrace slightly higher, we could see that uh, Instead, the uh, New Zealand US dollar a currency pair could turn somehow lower. The picture changes a bit when we are looking at the long term charts where the market might be a bit overextended from all the way these high points here towards the lows, tracing higher, further lows here. And that might tell us that further momentum, further motivation here could be also, of course, towards the uh, dollar weakness. The picture might change as early as today, though. And that's the critical part, I would say, here. Uh, doing the, um, the consumer price index in the US, if that's going to kind of give us slightly weaker reading, that could cause the US dollar to somehow weaken a little bit further. A bit of a weaker US dollar also would tell us then that the New Zealand dollar could gear up momentum, that obviously also the US dollar against the Japanese yen could turn somehow lower, pretty reactive potentially also. However, it doesn't really look like this, looking at it from the uh, longer term dollar Japanese yen uh, currency pair. But of course, also the uh, euro dollar currency pair is sitting at uh, extremely oversold territories here, which uh, could tell us that the market in this case here at the uh, oversold area, it could in the end obviously change direction, change direction to the upside, which in this case, obviously it tells us some sort of weaker reading in the dollar is uh, what could kind of push the market to the upside. Obviously after these uh, strong moves towards lower levels, uh, as we could say here, and the question is always like, are we in this kind of phase of the market move currently, or are we in this phase currently where the market will reboot again towards um, that some sort of uh, higher motivations? At the moment, we can see that the market has been overextended uh, quite a bit, and I would rather compare the markets to some of uh, uh, levels like uh, these ones here where the retracement was happening, or those lower ones where the after retracements were happening. And that's exactly what I would see here in this case. Uh, some sort of motivation to the upside. Um, it could be seen problematic only. It's uh, basically, of course, as always in the charts, it's all speculation what we are doing here that uh, the market trend is clearly 
to the short side of things, we are trading very well below the 50 moving average on any time frame. Yeah, so extremely long term, we can observe that the market has been trading to the downside, um, uh, especially also, also on the uh, monthly chart here, which uh, tells us that, that further motivation towards uh, uh, falling prices is rather going to be the likelihood. And that obviously itself would tell us that we should rather get uh, involved into short positions. However, and that's the critical part here, the market is being overextended odds on the monthly chart. And obviously, when the markets are so much single-sided trading to the downside, in this case, we might see the further upside motivation could be key. Something similarly what we've seen in the past here, very big bearish candles here, where the market subsequently kind of started to trade um, towards higher areas and obviously as the market uh, momentum, the bearishness has been taken over here as of recently, the uh, downside motivation might fade and the market might turn towards some sort of upside areas, uh, some sort of upside motivation, which is the key part, the critical part, which we might see here uh, at some point in the near future. So we'll uh, assess this uh, situation kind of a, a bit uh, later in the trading day. As I said, we are trading at quite low areas here and if we are looking at this from the four hour charts or even from the hourly charts there are or well, there is a certain a certain indication that potentially this trend line here we could even extend this as far as this high points here no matter what depending on how we assess the market motivation maybe from this perspective uh, that the market currently starts to uh, secretly silently uh, breaking to the upside potentially give us some sort of higher readings. And that's exactly what I would see here as a potential uh, chance here for us. Uh, the reading here towards the 101 area, basically it could be seen somehow soon, translating obviously to some sort of a strengthening momentum in the Euro, some upside momentum, which uh, it could be on the horizon, as I just said, um, giving us the opportunity potentially to uh, find uh, ourselves here in some uh, buy trades here for now. And that translates also potentially towards uh, the uh, um, uh, consumer price index here. Maybe we see a bit of a cooling of the figure here. Maybe we see some sort of slightly weaker momentum in the consumer price index. Obviously, as I said, a stronger reading likely going to boost the US dollar and the general idea uh, of uh, some sort could also be that uh, a stronger consumer price index obviously would boost the US dollar. However, a weaker consumer price index uh, could also boost the US dollar, but maybe just a medium term, right? Maybe market participants, uh, participants see that to exit current positions, exit current short trades, uh, and then exactly when the market uh, strengthens, when the euro, for example, among other currencies, pairs, uh, among other currencies uh, rises in momentum, the dollar weakens potentially, market uh, participants could take this into consideration to get into fresh short positions, to get into fresh long positions of the US dollar, short positions here, not to be confusing too much, basically short the euro dollar currency pair and a long position within the US dollar to ride the market again uh, to the downside. So that's uh, what I would say here makes potentially um, sense to me. On the other hand, also what we could observe here is uh, uh, clearly the uh, US 10-year bond yields uh, in or are the 10-year bond yields here. Um, we can see that they are uh, kind of really being kept at uh, below at the moment the 3% level. There is a certain pin bar candle. The market is kind of also looking at it from the RSI perspective within overbought territories. The old saying, if everybody is already invested here or if everybody is already long yields, then there might be kind of just a change in direction and we might see that this market turns again to the downside here, at least for some short term uh, potential here. Maybe in the next couple of, uh, couple of uh, say, weeks or months, the market that's on the monthly chart here, uh, the market kind of towards, uh, say, uh, August, September, October, maybe, um, when in within the uh, the latter part of the last quarter this year, the market then turns direction, or turns to the downside, and hence, obviously, then in, in turn, potentially really break out substantially again towards and beyond the uh, upside area. That's at least what we can observe here right now. The uh, clear part towards higher levels, uh, as we would expect it here, medium term. So that's uh, a bit of my uh, uh, line in the sand here, which I'm looking at when uh, assessing bond deals, obviously. 
and uh, bond yields in general, where uh, which have kind of guided market participants towards uh, the stock market. Speaking of stock markets, by the way, and um, we can observe that in general, obviously, the uh, financing of the so-called tech stocks uh, is the critical part, why tech stocks might weaken somehow a bit further. First of all, they have gained a lot of momentum. And again, the question might be, how much yield would one get from the entire tech stock uh, uh, market uh, hemisphere? We all know that the Teslas, the Googles, obviously cash rich, um, uh, big time, obviously Apple among others. But um, during the current uh, high inflationary uh, potential times, uh, the uh, market motivation for market participants to invest in such stocks uh, is rather limited. Cyclical stocks, uh, energies potentially if not even also commodity producers could be uh, at some point uh, seeing some sort of uh, inflow despite also some certain banks which have been uh, gearing up momentum in terms of that uh, in terms of that uh, current market um, market adjustment market change time um, the critical part obviously is the financing part uh, from the uh, from the tech market perspective, uh, tech stocks really kind of use a lot of amount uh, for marketing, uh, advertisement, and uh, the refinancing story for those companies. Where quite a few of those are obviously also not uh, sustainable in terms of their uh, income sheets, uh, and that's obviously kind of really bringing that entire uh, entire narrative. Uh, to a bit of a potential standstill here. So I'm not sure if the Teslas from right now are the companies which are gearing up momentum in the next couple of years. So talking about this also, I got some family members working and being involved in the car manufacturing industries and some of the car manufacturers, uh, uh, even the European ones, they are moving big time also towards electric uh, vehicle motivation, even self-driving and all that, where Tesla uh, uh, kind of arguably is uh, definitely uh, not uh, not losing behind but uh, uh, on the other hand obviously the other companies are not sleeping as well all the time they are also kind of uh, doing their homework now in order to be uh, competitive as well uh, in uh, terms of uh, what might work in the near future so that's uh, definitely kind of uh, something which we should uh, keep into mind in in mind yes tesla ceo elon musk the coolest guy potentially from a business perspective on earth but also every uh, every certain chapter every uh, uh, story has a certain peak which might have been already behind us and uh, that's exactly why the question remains the same if that uh, story kind of really will move on somehow further or if not even kind of now market motivation changes the question of course also in stock markets is always like the outlook for the future what we trade in markets is definitely the outlook it's the future idea in markets and uh, if there's any news impact and currently the current narrative like uh, central banks adjusting interest rates to the higher areas uh, translating obviously to a preview in stock markets where stocks shares prices uh, have already obviously adjusted as this is so-called priced in all the information is uh, already obviously uh, already known the next expectation uh, ranges around the 75 basis points interest rate hike during the next uh, federal reserve meeting so if this is going to happen if the 75 basis point uh, rate increase from the us dollar or in the us is going to happen that's not going to be a huge amount of uh, a piece of news uh, and uh, obviously market motivation might be slightly limited instead of any sort of surprise news event which is what we might expect here today any surprise consumer price index uh, to the downside as i said and uh, you can see that here in the economic calendar maybe any sort of lower reading here from the consumer price index uh, motivation might tell us that uh, short term some sort of a us dollar surprise negatively speaking could be seen and that the us dollar also the might somehow weaken that's for that side the uh, interest rate decision full packed webinar a day today for us obviously cpi figure and boc we are trading live together so please join into our webinar session obviously where we are trying to find out further motivation to get uh, a few pips out of the markets hopefully um uh, let's like look at the oil markets and that's the same as also comparing it to the uh, um, silver precious metals and commodities market here um, i'm not really sure if the uh, oil market is really now going to turn much lower from current levels we are kind of also supported by a sort of uh, a supportive uh, moving average here 50 moving average bit of a long-term play here it could gear up market motivation towards uh, higher areas we can see that here this uh, supportive zone here the weekly support one zone uh, sitting at around the 93 94 area and as everything as of recently there's a lot of uh, volatility in market momentum here or in markets 
and that amount of volatility it could tell us that uh, upside motivation is yet going to happen somehow further i wouldn't be hence uh, extremely bearish uh, of this or in this market uh, uh, current market motivation here or market environment i would rather look for some sort of upside motivation here and again also a stronger dollar obviously helps uh, uh, pulling the oil markets to the uh, downside here of some sort, uh, some sort of slight weakness in dollar could also help the oil markets to turn again towards higher areas. That's at least what I would see. And then back to the uh, Canadian dollar, the loonie, as we call it, is uh, kind of a bit on the weaker side right now. Euro Canadian dollar is something we should look into uh, later on also. That market as well on the shorter term chart looks actually quite well supported here right now it has been beaten down obviously there's always the big uh, critical story something which has gone to the downside does not necessarily move to the upside something which has been beaten towards lower levels could also be turning could also turn towards even lower areas here yet obviously after sudden falls after sudden uh, negative price development we might see that this market also it could turn to the upside again here and could tell us that the uh, based on the uh, or based from below the uh, 30 moving average uh, sorry 30 uh, rsi reading here it could gear up momentum and instead of course uh, tell us that the upside motivation towards the 133 134 area and at max here it could be the interesting part which uh, which tells us that, that the upside here obviously might kind of stay intact uh, in this case and then obviously to the other side or on the other side um, something interesting also for me should we believe the US dollar uh, kind of offers us a slight bit of weakness right now, as we said, right? So most currency pairs have been beaten down or the guidance or the, the gain of the on, on uh, in the US dollar. Should we see some sort of weakness in the US dollar? We might see that this trade is going to be executed here uh, at some point. I still have this position open uh, here and uh, that's clearly, sorry, not the position, the uh, sell order, obviously. 128.80 selling below the low is uh, what I would say makes potentially sense here. And in this case, obviously, there's some sort of weakness here in this market might tell us that uh, the downside momentum could be key. 128, uh, 128.80 is what I would see makes sense here potentially to uh, sell the market later on. But we will assess this uh, situation later on uh, when uh, the market motivation uh, gives us further guidance here at the Canadian dollar interest rate uh, or oh, sorry at the bank of canada interest rate decision what's up also uh, our open position here on the euro japanese yen not running to perfection right now the market obviously starting to uh, uh, slightly uh, gear up some sort of momentum however i think this is just a, a short-term correction i still would like to play this trade of the long-term chart here we can see the uh, um, uh, the uh, the uh, longer term kind of rising price uh, uh, trend uh, has been kind of broken uh, to the downside and i think that this market is still kind of in a bit of a retracement yeah. moment here bearish move here retracement to the upside and instead here maybe in the next couple of days if not maybe next week the market could fall somehow further that's the question obviously on how the euro is going to work out somehow further and how much uh, Japanese yen strength we might see if we're looking at it from the long-term perspective here obviously the market is still in a bit of a corrective pattern here uh, one uh, or these kind of railroad tracks here as you would call this one candle to the upside the other one to the downside still would translate for me or would translate to me uh, that bearish motivation could be still on the cards anyways I still remain uh, remain in my open position it's a bit of a counter trend trade but obviously off the uh, long-term move here of the long-term momentum we might still see that this market turns again towards lower levels so hence uh, obviously staying in with this trading position and waiting for the market to uh, tell me on how that uh, kind of works. Well, markets are critical at the moment. That's for sure. There are a lot of political news. We still get the information regarding uh, uh, the Twitter battle also. That's a bit of a sidekick here. Obviously, everyone likely eyeing these uh, uh, these lawyers from Twitter. They are looking to kind of, uh, as uh, um, Bloomberg states, a lightning quick trial to resolve the claim that uh, Elon Musk still has to purchase Twitter as the uh, given uh, $55.20 uh, per share in order to take that company 
a private or whatever he plans to do with it. Um, the company obviously still is just uh, uh, um, uh, is still in a big trouble in this case, as obviously a share prices uh, have been reactive after the piece of news that uh, Elon Musk, uh, as he stated, uh, found that many uh, fake accounts and that these amount of fake accounts uh, would enable him not or would kind of cause him not to be interested in uh, purchasing the uh, the uh, company somehow further. So that's uh, on a side note, obviously, what might be interesting uh, of some sort. On the other hand, obviously, Russia's oil exports are still growing. So um, the uh, critical situation, which I see here, the European Union maybe kind of uh, has been just uh, placed a bit of an own goal in this case. Um, uh, diesel, among other fuel products, have been uh, exported to rather towards the Middle East. And um, those flows have changed direction uh, since uh, since uh, the war kind of uh, began in uh, February. So, and that's definitely something critical. And we can see, obviously, comparing it in the US, energy prices slightly lower within Europe. Obviously, energy prices still through the roof. Currently, a uh, pipeline uh, pipeline maintenance uh, uh, maintenance situation between Russia and Germany, as much as I understand, uh, would also cause a bit of a halt to refill. Um, refill gas storage facilities in uh, mainly in Germany, and obviously the the heavy uh, energy industry in uh, or heavy heavily yeah the the heavily uh, heavy energy um, energy community. Uh, com consuming industries in uh, Germany might really cause further uh, further motivation to uh, really reduce uh, reduce obviously their output uh, and that itself obviously would be uh, would be obviously quite impactful to the uh, European if not um, in general obviously also the German economy so let's see how markets move I think we have uh, a full house today here in terms of webinar and news events uh, New Zealand dollar not extremely reactive consumer price index will check out later uh, Canada, uh, Canadian dollar, uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision a rate uh, a rate increase going to be expected. A couple of words about the uh, uh, metals market. I would kind of really think uh, that soonish we might see that um, um, that uh, especially uh, the silver market could be of interest here for us. I think further motivation for this market to kind of start gearing up momentum slowly it could be seen oversold in this case the market has been a quite uh, be, has been beaten has been beaten down to the downside here uh, quite a bit uh, let's see not that we can, can compare recent moves here um to uh, one to, to the other but definitely we are in oversold territories here right now and i would say that this might tell us that further upside motivation a bit of a trend change here at least short term could be seen hence obviously also slight dollar weakness would also help the uh, precious metal space here so let's see how things go in this uh, case questions there is something from your side um corrado hey uh, what's your take on the pound canadian dollar oh that's not a currency pair i look at uh, quite often here let me check pound uh, slightly gearing up momentum no, it's not telling me anything corrado no i don't see anything major here um let me check uh, pound us kind of in a similar move here to me corrado it's the same it's the same kind of uh, um, pattern here, which I would see pin bar here on the pound US dollar market moving higher, pin bar on the pound Canadian dollar market moving higher. I wouldn't like to trade it as uh, mostly also uh, against, I wouldn't like to trade the pound against the Canadian dollar. I would just like use, say, a bit of an easier position, easier trade pound or cable as we call it due to the old uh, C copper cable between the uh, UK, Great Britain and uh, the US, which is why the currency pair is still called that way. Pound US is just a bit of an easier trade potentially. I wouldn't kind of really like to trade this where the Canadian dollar and where also oil prices are involved. That's why I don't see anything major also here. I wouldn't touch it as such, as I said, but uh, pound Canadian dollar looks at, at least um, quite positive so far. It looks like it could kind of gear up some sort of momentum here, but uh, I'm not really sure how the market goes. Yes, we are trading uh, on the shorter term time frame um, above the 50 moving average. That's of interest potentially, but uh, that's about it here from my side. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll uh, talk to you later on here. Consumer Price Index is the next uh, pit stop we're going to do here. And uh, we're going to evaluate in terms of pit stop, of course, on how the uh, uh, how the uh, Consumer Price Index is going to tell us uh, that the US dollar motivation might be seen. Take care, everyone. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.